So how are we going to escape the pirate's brig? Hey everyone, welcome to Prince of the Gate. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with Season 5, Episodes 8 and 9 of The Dragon Prince. The final two episodes of the season. So, yeah, we we are at the end of another Dragon Prince season already. And that means there's going to be a wait before the next one. But I, I believe I was told that, like, I think it's the upcoming season, which would be season 7, because season 6 is already released, is going to be the final one. So... It is going to be closing out. We have, I guess, two more seasons to go after this uh, ending. And I'm, I'm interested, for sure, to see how this is going to really wrap up and how it's going to even escalate from here. Right now, we have a couple of main plot lines going on. We have three, I would say, main plot lines. We have our main group, who has now been taken captive by the pirates we have the plot line with amaya having to rescue her wife from the blood witch who was sent by you know her wife's brother because he's a pissy little baby who can't just you know let sleeping dogs lie i guess of course he should have also been imprisoned and not banished that was a mistake in the first place uh, but the third plot line we have is with the bad guys who are on their way to free um, Erebos. And, except um, Viren has kind of been out of commission, I feel like, most of this season. He's been kind of, like, barely there, like, mentally. So I have no clue where that's really going. Um, but I'm interested to see what we got for these final two episodes. Because on our main group side, we have to escape and defeat the pirates. And then they have to continue on their way towards the, the lake. It is a lake, right? I think so. And then we have to have um, the rescue over with Amaya. She has to rescue her wife. Um... And hopefully we have to kind of put an end to uh, the brother. Names escape me, I apologize. We have to put an, an end to him for good, honestly. Like, he either needs to be, like, permanently imprisoned um, or die. One of the two. There is no other option here. Because I don't think he can be redeemed, honestly. I, d I just don't. And... With our third one, honestly, I'd be fine if they just were wiped out by a dragon or something. <laughs> At least Viren. Please, let us just, let's just kill Viren. It's, it's time. We, we don't need him for the final two seasons. We, we don't. Let's just kill Viren and move on. Claudia? I don't know. I, I I'm still kind of worried she's beyond help at this point. But... She's not her father. At, at least we can say that. She's not quite yet her father. She's unfortunately trying to be like him, but she hasn't gotten there yet. And I think Terry is helping with that, really. Terry's kind of the uh, good egg in all of this. So hopefully he can steer her away from it. But if Viren dies, cool. We celebrate. We have a party. We drink. We get uh, White Girl Wasted. It'll be a good day. Uh, but that being said, let us just get into things and see how these final two episodes play out. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We also have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but upload them on the weekend. We also have gaming content 
every day of the week over on the Princess of Gaming channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day, Baldur's Gate 3 every day, every Wednesday and Sunday we have Beyond Two Souls, and we have Poppy Playtime on Saturdays. Don't forget to click the link in the description below to get to today's video. I redirect everything due to copyright. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more awesome content like this in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get to today's reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So just as a reminder, uh, or not really a reminder, but just to reiterate from the reaction, I apologize for the issues that came up with uh, OBS shutting down in between episodes 8 and 9. Not really something I could help, um, but, you know, at least it wasn't during an episode. So, we have that to thank. Um, so yeah, this, this kind of left off in an interesting way. Because we, like, our hero succeeded. But there's a lot that's left open because, obviously, there's more seasons to come. We gathered this pearl, which I guess is the prison itself. And I'm really surprised that um, Erebos wasn't unleashed. Because this is, what, the second season that is considered Mystery of Erebos, right? I believe uh, season four was the first Mystery of Erebos season. Um, which means that there's four seasons that are going to be Mystery of Erebos. Four, five, six, and seven. And we're halfway through and Erebos hasn't been unleashed. He hasn't been released from his prison. That just seems weird. I mean, I know we have two seasons left, so technically he could be released at the end of Season 6, and that would lead to them having to stop him in Season 7. That could still happen, which that might be the plan. But I just really thought he would have been, like, an, like an active enemy for longer. Maybe that was just my, like, expectation, but I'm really surprised that he's not out yet. Um, Claudia lost a leg. Maybe that'll get her to see reason. <laughs> Probably not. Um, but yeah, that's a thing that has happened now. And Viren is on the cusp of finally dying. Yay! We might get what we have finally wanted all along, or at least what I've wanted all along. Viren dying. And like I said in the reaction, I will give credit where it's due. I, I will always give credit where it's due. Viren made probably the first right decision in his life. He chose to forego power, to turn his back on Erevos and Dark Magic, and side with in order to save his children. Although, technically, by doing this, he's not siding with his daughter. Uh, it's, you know, the entire complicated issue there. <laughs> but it's probably the first and only good thing he's done in his life. And now he's set to die. But the fact that he didn't die yet at, by the end implies that at the start of the next season, either Erevos is going to get unleashed which will save him or something else is going to save him um because i, I just don't I, I just i don't see it happening yet i i just i i don't see him dying quite yet but by specifically the fact that he didn't die at the end of the season i just feel like it would it would be almost weird to kill him off at the very beginning of of the next um it, it would just feel like weird timing that's all i'm saying um 
but let's let's actually go back to episode eight real quick. So episode eight is mostly about stopping Finnegrin, turning his crew, especially Elmer, against him. And having uh, having the ship now take them to where they need to get to. And unfortunately, Callum is forced into eventually using dark magic again. The second time he's ever used it, the same spell, so it's not like he's um, like doing a lot of different things that'll get him like more enticed by it. And I don't think he's enticed by it really at all. I think he still finds it horrific and like terrible. But he's unquestionably like feeling guilt over having to use it again to escape and to, you know, help his friends, especially Rayla, who was almost food for a Leviathan there. But he manages to save her, he manages to save everyone. And Soren is actually the one who helps turn Elmer against Finnegrin and is the reason that Elmer literally feeds Finnegrin to the fishes. <laughs> um it was it was a great moment. The only issue is I feel like there should have been a little more build up to Elmer feeling used and put out and abused by Finnegrin. I, I really feel like there wasn't enough set up for that. It almost feels like it came out of nowhere in episode eight. Um, we we have heard Finnegrin berating um, Elmer Pryor, but there wasn't really much of any hint that Elmer was like against it or like really put out by it or anything. There wasn't really anything to kind of tell us that it was bad. <laughs> or it was being perceived as bad by Elmer. Like, there wasn't even, like, any kind of hint that, uh, that Elmer was his name and that he didn't like being called by the other name. So, which, by the way, if it's not clear, I am purposefully not saying. Um, I'm not gonna dead name Elmer. <laughs> Even though it's not really a dead name, per se. It's more... It, it was just never Elmer's name in the first place. It's It was more of a... I guess you could say more of a slave name. I mean, I don't want to necessarily equate this to slavery for a lot of obvious reasons, but he was kind of being enslaved, in a way, by Finnegrin. And... It's the name that Finnegrin specifically gave to him, specifically referred to him as, as part of his, you know, forced control. So there's a similarity there, but I, I'm not going to say it's like exactly the same thing, because that would be just, you know, wrong and kind of messed up. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm still not going to call Elmer by that name. Nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a very tense episode. It was interesting to see what would happen, but we knew it would come, we would come out on top in the end. We, we knew how it would end out. So no real big surprises in that regard. Um, then with episode nine, we focus on reaching the lake and basically the race and fight to find the prison and all with both sides using different kinds of magic in order to breathe underwater our heroes using primal magic that's you know respectful and nice and good and then claudia just turning herself into fucking ursula from little mermaid and it's just like what the fuck it's like, ma'am, why? <laughs> and it's it's not even that long lasting. She has to keep uh, taking the potion for it to keep effect long enough. And also with the fact that her legs were literally transformed into the tentacles, her like getting the tentacles sliced off also caused her leg 
to get sliced off, so yeah, that's fun. Doesn't seem like the most useful uh, spell now, does it, Claudia? Um, but we also had the the entire interaction between Erevos and um, and Viren, where we found out that the homunculus child is technically considered the offspring of Viren and Erevos, and it's like. What an ugly baby you have birthed. <laughs> and you didn't even birth it. That's not even how it worked. It, it, it's like magic. It, it, it was like a magical uh, conception, I guess. <laughs> it's weird to think about. But yeah. Um, I guess fuck all the homophobes out there who say that uh, two dads can't have a baby, right? <laughs> um, though... Honestly, Viren would absolutely be a homophobe himself, ironically. Uh, Erevos, Erevos is super fucking gay, though. He is, like, super flamboyant gay. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Um, but all of that aside, yeah, I just feel like, uh, I, I, I feel like Viren finally refusing to go along with Erevos' plan here. Like, he's finally chosen to do a good thing for the first time in his life, and is... I, I don't know if he's necessarily regretting his actions, but he's at least regretting leading Claudia down this path. And at the very least, he's choosing now to actually care about his children. Because... He did not always do that. Um, Soren is actually pretty good evidence of that. Um, considering he... I, I believe... Didn't he try to have Soren killed? Or at least sent him to his death or something like that? It's like, he, he very much did not care initially. And maybe it's just you could say that, oh, he cares about Claudia more than Soren. Which also is fucked up still. But it's like either way, I think it, it's still new for him to have found more of a interest in caring about his children. I, I think it's more accurate to say that, you know, dying the first time uh, probably gave him some different insights into, uh, into things. That, that, I feel, is more accurate than trying to say, like, he just didn't realize he cared all this time. He didn't. He just didn't. He, he would have absolutely sacrificed Claudia or Soren um, in seasons one through three. He would have sacrificed them in a heartbeat, without hesitation, to bring Erebos into the world, out of his prison. It, he, no hesitation. Just to get more power. It's only because he died that he has chosen to, you know, kind of turn things around and see things differently. Which it should not take that, by the way. It should, it should not take that kind of extreme measure to make you see the difference between right and wrong. But again, at least he's finally, like turning himself around to a degree. I still don't like him, and I still think the world would be better off with him dead, especially since he just should be dead already. But, yeah. He's at least choosing to do one good thing with his life, and I will give the credit where it's due. Still want him to die, though. Because he deserves it. He, he just does. Like, one good action will not make up for everything else he's done. Hell, ten good actions wouldn't make up for it. He's, he, I don't think he can make up for it. I don't think he can make good on everything, all the evil he's done at this point. The, the only thing he can do is die. 
it sounds harsh. It sounds, it, it, it sounds terrible, but there is a point of no return. There is a point where, like, someone is past redemption. At least in my eyes. It, sound, it, it, it sounds harsh, but there's certain things I just can't forgive and certain points where I... It's like the person's too far gone. Even if they have, like, started to turn themselves around to some degree... It's like you are too... It's too dangerous for them to exist in this world. They are too much of an act of danger. If anything tempts them to go back to the dark side, like too many lives are in, in active peril. And then with, uh, with the Sunfire situation, we managed to get the queen back. She's saved thanks to Amaya and thanks to Basically convincing the Blood Witch that, you know, she has no point to do any of this anymore. Because it's like, oh yeah, by the way, this dude, he can't free you. He has no claim to the throne and to the crown anymore. He he can't free you from your bond. The only one who can is the queen, and you if you kill her, she can't do that. You'll never be free. The binding around your neck will constrict you until it kills you. So she's like, yeah, okay, peace, I'm out. <laughs> And so it's like, yeah, plans did not go according to plan until it did. Because unfortunately, his girlfriend in the army stole the Sunseed, stole the army, and has now led them to stage an entire coup of sorts. So that's good. That's great. We gotta fucking kill him. Like, again, it, it's a case of, like, there's just a point of no return. And this is that point. I, I don't think there's any coming back from this. For him or his girl. I, I think they both have to die. This is too egregious of a sin, honestly. They are put, putting way too many lives in danger. They are too much of an active threat. They have to die. It's like... It, there, there's just no other way around it. Don't know how that's going to end up going, but it has to happen. And meanwhile, Zim's mother is still struggling to fight off the corruption. She has a dream seeing her late husband... Which is really just her mind telling her that she needs to fight through this. And she manages to make it to the forest before collapsing. And is seemingly being helped by a mysterious mushroom mage. Who I don't think we've seen before. I don't think I recognize him in any way. Um, but he's helping her from what we can tell. And that's really good. That's really good for a lot of obvious reasons. So we're left off with a lot of things set up for the next season. I just, I guess we'll have to wait and see that how it goes until we end up getting to season six. I don't know when that's going to end up being, just whenever I end up choosing to get to it. Um, it might eventually pop up on another uh, wheel, another randomizer wheel for... Uh, future um donation reward reactions so we might end up actually getting into it a lot sooner than you think but speaking of this was the end of the season we do need a replacement for thursdays so we need to once again bring up the wheel the wheel of names let me get this up so to just go over everything that's on here again we have Cabinet of Curiosities for Matthew Vasquez, Sinful Gear GX for Calypso, Lovely Complex for Specca de Grau, Unicorn Warriors Eternal, and Invincible Season 2 have unknown donators, uh, Mo Dao Zushi for Dice, Lucifer Season 2 for Venom, and then there were None 2012. I can't remember who that's for at the moment, but it'll tell once it comes up. And How to Keep a Mummy for um, 
Um, oh God, the name is escaping. Isabella. So, like always, I want to make sure that the wheel is full of different people's stuff. Just to make sure that everybody has a chance of uh, being chosen. Um, so, there's no repeats of people on here. So, like, even though Venom donates the most to the channel, only one of Venom's uh, donation reward shows is on here right now. And, as you see, that's Lucifer Season 2. So, yeah. We're going to spin this, and whatever is chosen is what we're going to get to next. Um, I guess we will end up seeing, so let us, let us just do this. What are we going to get? It looks like it's Lucifer Season 2. Okay. So Lucifer Season 2 is our winner. We will, uh, be getting to that right away starting next week. Um, we'll touch on that when we get to it next time, but just as a reminder and everything, I do, I did really enjoy season one. There were some parts of it that weren't the best, but that happens with every show. But I did really enjoy it overall, and I'm very interested to see where we get with season two. Um, so... Thank you all so much for tuning in. Let me close this. <laughs> uh, let me know your thoughts on these final two episodes of Dragon Prince Season 5. And thank you to Smurf uh, for donating for this, uh, for, for donating for this series back uh, when you did. Um, like I said, we'll get to Season 6 at some point in the future. For now, though, again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I, uh, I'm Connie. I'm signing off. See you all next time.